Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, January the 13th, 2019. And I want everybody that's on my personal channel to subscribe to I Love Stocks. And uh, I'm going to turn this right over to Vegas. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we have quite the list today and uh, to prepare you guys for this coming week. So we're going to be talking about SAEX, ACST, AT, CPRX, FTK, Pura, OTC stock. We're going to talk briefly about UGAS, DGAS, and then Jim's going to comment on some pot stocks. So the first one we're going to talk about is SAEX. And as you guys know, uh, this is actually a low float stock. And um, this actually had quite the run, actually quite a few days in a row last week. And this is obviously a company in oil and gas. They're in Texas. They call themselves SAE. And they do land service, marine services. They do data processing. I mean, they do a lot of different things. But the bottom line is that they're a low float stock. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jim, really, to talk about uh, what's, you know, what's happening and, uh, you know, what's going on with this chart. Because uh, for a long time, this was very quiet and didn't do nothing. And there's a lot of people, I think, bag holding this from a few months back when it was over $8. And uh, hopefully there's hope for them, uh, me included. <laughs> So I'm going to turn it over to Jim and tell us what's going on here with SAEX. Well, SAEX has been a good scalper for me. we sitting here and, and you could see the yearly high of 73.80 and it's just came on down and hit a 182 on the yearly chart. So I'm going to be pulling up. Let me see here. I'll pull up the daily chart on it. And I think I've got the wrong one over here, so I'm going to move this chart over. There we go. SAEX. So we've had a real nice three-day run on this. It started showing off back last week, and we ran up to about 260 and it pulled back, found the bottom here at two bucks, kind of humped around a little bit, and then the next day we had a good breakout. So we've been watching this stock real closely here for the last three days. And it's every time it pulls back, it pulls back to that trend line. And we had a little bounce back up to my resistance there at 469. Pulled back to that trend line. And then right before close, we had a breakout on this thing. And it ran all the way to 640. $6.40. I called a resistance at 571. And it ran all and we were I was calling them on the way up when this breakout happened. So I was really, really surprised to see that 640, but I did have it on, on mark. For 640, 649 would have been the next resistance. And now we've pulled back to the 563 area. This is SAEX. We had a golden cross when this broke out right here. You see that little golden cross right there where that 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 50 day average crosses over the 100 and the 200 SMA. And then every time I see it start to pull down that green one, that's when I want to probably go ahead and sell out of it. But right now we're still moving up. So I'm going to pull this up to a one day, one minute. And we started pulling down after hours, and so did the stock. The stock hit a little flat top right here. I mean, a little spot right here at 562 a couple times. Run up to that 50, and then came back, right back down. So I'm kind of looking at this thing to pull down some more. I've got a couple areas that I'm interested in. I know we're going to pull back. We hit, pulled back to that resistance that I called at 571. And I have another one here at 550. If that don't hold, I've got a couple other support levels at it, and I'm going to draw one right here I just now seen. Just now notice that right there at that 513 area. So let's see if we think can hold at 550. I mean, this was a huge bounce. It bounced from, let me repeat it, it bounced from $4.20 all the way up to 620 right before close. That's a $2 bounce. So it was it's overextended right now. And if it pulls back, I think we're still going to have this stock in play. So keep SAEX on watch. And Vegas, the next one is one that you like, ACST. 
Yeah, so a Casti Pharma, it's actually located in Canada, in Quebec. And uh, they've had a nice little move here on this, on this chart. Uh, I do like it. They actually had some news as well on January 9 that uh, they did get a certificate for a European patent that was issued by the European office, patent office. And uh, this is valid until 2030. Uh, so that's good. The patent provides protection across all major markets in Europe. So this is interesting. Um, but what I really like really about the chart is I just like that it keeps on moving up and it's in a beautiful channel here. And um, I believe that uh, it's been up uh, constantly day after day after day since last week, since this news actually. And uh, I really like the way that um, it's closing here on the Bollinger Bands. So it looks definitely, may look overbought, but uh, I think there's going to be a potential continuation here for even, um, not so sure how it would look on a day trade, but uh, I think I'd be comfortable personally uh, swing trading this particular stock at this time. Jim, over to you on that chart. Yeah, they were also, was awarded board compensation of matter of the method to use patents by the European Patent Office. So that's kind of news that kind of made it pop up a little bit. So SAEX, I'm going to pull up the year's chart on it. And that's a yearly daily. And you could see another stock that got way oversold. Excuse me, that's not the right ticker. Put that in real fast. Now that I look at the yearly chart, we're kind of hit hit a bit of uh, oh I'd say a pivot point maybe a little resistance first resistance right around here at 112 118 but anytime a ticker breaks above a dollar I get very interested in it we have three white soldiers right here three days in a row so I'm expecting this to maybe go up to the next level at 120 119 area and maybe to 125 and if we can break past that we can move on up to the 129 130 area and this can get up back up if this keeps going, which look, it's had, it's had a great two-week run all the way from down here to 66 cents, almost a 100% gain to 115. Now, I also have places where I think it can pull back. It can pull back to one of my favorite numbers, which is right around 105, 106, which I would call a very good support with a low one just right under a buck. So maybe if this does pull back, it'll pop right back up. But the resistance levels after this, we'll see what happens Monday. We're at this 115. If we can get up to the 119 area, to the 125, we can bring it up to 130 and and find a little resistance right there. So, you know, just keep an eye on, on the volume, on the price action. And we're bullish on it. So, you know, I like to play the pullbacks if it happens. They always dip and they always bounce right back up. And this is ACST, and Vegas and I are both bullish on it a little bit, or I am a little bit, and I see another level right here. It could pull back to that 110. That's just a five cent dip. So really, this is it's concentrate in this area between 98 cents and up here to around 118, 113. I mean, that 98 and 113. If we can keep in that channel, I think we're going to have a nice little scout play. And maybe a swing trade depends on the momentum of the stock. And the next one that Vegas would like to speak about would be AT. Yeah, so I really like uh, Atlantic Power Corporation. Um, they're actually listed both on the Toronto Exchange under uh, ATP and on the NYSE at the ticker being AT. Also, they are in the Russell 2000. They're an electrical utility company. They're located in Massachusetts. And uh, they do serve uh, the United States and also Canada. So no wonder they're listed on the Canadian Stock Exchange. Um, so I do like, uh, you know, the detail, this actual chart as well. I mean, it definitely looks overbought. Uh, this stock, you know, this chart reminds me of the one we just talked about. I mean, there's a lot of strength in the energy stocks. Maybe not all of them, but this one has good good strength. Uh, and and Jim, when Jim will talk about the chart, I mean, this keeps going higher and higher and higher. So definitely looks uh, overbought. 
Um, and definitely the Bollinger Bands are definitely walking and I like it. So I think we could see also a continuation on this particular stock. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be on scanners, um, but I don't care about that. I'm looking for a stock that's going to actually continue to have movement. And uh, this is one that uh, would interest me as well for a continuation and also a swing trade idea. And I Jim? always, I always yeah. talk. I always talk about being in the now, knowing what, what's going on. It's part of the philosophy of trading, and a lot of people miss that. And they just try to, to, to take something that's just off the scanner. Or, but there's a big part of being a good trader is being in the now, knowing what sectors are running, know if it's cold outside or hot outside, or the energy sector's running because, you know, because of the major sell-off they've had in the last 10, 8 years. And now we have an energy president in office. And and so, you know, just part of being a good trader is being in the now. And I talk about that quite a bit, about it on a daily basis. And so I'm going to pull up this chart. And this is one that we talked about, her and I were talking about. It moves in five cent increments. And, and you can see by this yearly chart what I'm talking about. We, I'm going to go ahead and draw these trend lines as I go. And you can see when I draw a trend line, I just go straight across the page and I try to find a consolidation period. Well, this it's done this all year long from $2.10. $2 and it did sell off when I was calling the market and my crystal ball came out. And I was telling people to look at stocks that you like. Look at ones that you played. Be in the now. Know that December was a, was a flunky month, one of the worst months for a sell-off that the country's ever seen. And that was, opened up my eyes to be telling people, look at stocks you've played before and see how much they've sold off. Being in the now. So this dropped to $1.85, and within days, it bounced right back up to that 225 level, 224, within days. And so when I'm saying five cent increments, I'm saying 210, and I'm going to draw a little trend line right here, and I'm saying 215. And I'm saying 220, and I'm saying 225, and I'm saying 230. See how it moves up in five cent increments. Well, here in the last two weeks, it's ran from 207, and it's ran all the way to 243. And this is on a year chart. So we're looking at a double top on a year here at 245. It was a, penny, a couple pennies off right there come Friday. So this thing can pull back to some of my my resist my support level, which is at 230. I think that would be a good place to get in at. Remember, this is an energy play. So let's pull it back to 230 maybe and see if we, or if we can just go ahead and continue and break out of that double top. So if it pulls back, I'm looking at 230. If it breaks out, we're going to look, we're going to pull up. What we're going to do now is I'm going to pull up a three-year chart to look for a new resistance. See, it, it, it kind of tells me the same story. It's not a real high dollar stock. The three-year high was at 275, and here we are at 243. So I'm not going to say it's going to fly up to 10 bucks or five bucks or four dollars. What I am saying that this would be a good, good scalper play if it pulls back. I'm not sure I'd want to swing it, but who knows? You know, it gets a little bit of news, it can move on up. So we're looking at 255 for the next resistance. And the next resist, it, it, see what I'm saying? It moves in five cent increments all the way up. Now we're looking at 265. There's a 10 cent bounce, and I can see the 250 right there. So the, the year's high was 275. Let's see if we can get it to pull back to 230 for an entry. And I'm going to look one more time at the year's chart because I want to see something here. I want to see where the moving averages are. This is an indication that maybe we're going to have another breakout. You see the 50 is under the 100 and the 200, and it's starting to create a golden cross. And this thing could take off back to that resistance level of 275 if it keeps one moving. And that is AT. And the next one we're going to talk about is CPRX. Okay. So CPRX is Catalyst Pharmaceuticals. And, uh, you know, they're a biopharmaceutical company 
And, you know, biotech companies are definitely going to be in play for 2019. We've read so many articles. So you're going to hear us talk probably a lot about, um, you know, pharmaceutical stocks throughout the year. Uh, but this company in particular, uh, CPRX, is in Coral Gables, Florida. They develop therapeutics for neuro neurological diseases and um, they also include treatment of what they call LEMS, which is the Lambert Eaton Myasthenic Syndrome. And um, they also treat um, epileptic spasms, which oh. is very common in infantile and juveniles. And it was named after, um, they call it actually the West Syndrome, which is a rare epileptic disorder in infants, children, and adults. And it was actually named after the English physician called William James West. So there you go. I have juvenile uh, metabolic epilepsy. I've yes. Had, I've had epilepsy so there... ever since I was probably about 10 years old. So this this comes dear to my heart. And uh, it's it's something that I've grew up with. And right now I'm having seizures every three minutes in my brain. So, you know, I'm, I, I don't, I don't take medication for it. I kind of, I, I grew up smoking one hits most of my life. And it's kind of, I think that's been my medication for the epileptic that I have had. So when she brought that up, I kind of went straight dear to my heart and almost brought a tear to my eye. Yeah. So, so what they're doing is the company is developing a CPP-115, mm -hmm. which is a treatment for infantile spasms. So I really hope um, that they'll get some sort of approval. So this company had some news the other day, uh, about a week ago, and the news was that uh, they had an article, basically a publication of the clinical data from the investigator sponsored study which um, evaluates the treatment of um, the musk antibody positive myasthenia. So the article was positive. They said 15% of patients um, tested uh, negative, but the patients, uh, they did mention that 40 to 50% of the patients, uh, mostly in the US tested positive, uh, which is a protein that's required for the neuromuscular junction. Um, so it's a little bit of a high level uh, document, uh, really someone that's really in the sciences would really understand this a lot. Um, but definitely uh, some looks like there's positive news on it. Um, and maybe we'll hear more as the cl clinical trials advance. Uh, but this was just an article that they released and uh, regarding their uh, how it's how the clinical data uh, so as a result, um, I have noticed that the stock uh, over the last, really, if you look at the start of the new year, this stock was a strong buy, in my opinion, um, under $2. I mean, this oh, was yeah. back at $1.90 back on January 2nd. And I mean, look, we closed at like two sixty four. So, I mean, that has had a really, really nice run. And um, I still, you know, I kind of like that it has good support, that it crossed over the 50-day moving average. And, um, you know, I don't really know yet where the stock's going. It looks bullish to me. It looks like um, it wants to continue. Um, but, you know, again, we need to see if the support's going to, we need to see if it's going to continue above the 50-day now um, because this could also pull back. But it looks pretty strong at this point. But, uh, Jim, let us know what you think about this chart. I just love this chart. Of all the charts we've saw today, this is probably one of my favorite ones. Oh. And the reason I say that, because it has a lot of volatility. And with volatility, it's good for, for, for scalping and also swing trading. And like Vegas said, it ran from 185 low when I was telling everybody to look for stocks that you love. And it's ran up 70 some cents since then here in a matter of eight nine days so i see a pullback i'm looking at the year's chart and you can see we have a triple top up here right around oh i'd say probably around 389 and really my resistance would be around 385 so somewhere in that area and I had a, a yearly high of 405 so i'm going to pull up to 20 day chart and i really do like this chart a lot i mean a lot 
I think this thing can pull back a little bit to this support channel that I have between 252 and 255 and maybe if it goes down just to lower the lowest it will probably go will be right around 240 I see a support level right at 240 now I'm gonna pull up that year's chart again because well first I'll pull up a daily and the daily doesn't tell me much here we did have the we did have the breakout Friday from 252 which I mentioned earlier as a support level up here to 268 and then it kind of pulled back and consolidated but never did go back to that low and started to re regain ground so I'm gonna pull up this year chart one more time and I'm gonna call out a couple of resistances now what I've seen for a good solid resistance we're at a pivot point on the year would be right around this area of 281 so that would be a yearly pivot point and I'm gonna change that yeah 281 I'm gonna change that to a blue so I can have that and remember that come Monday that's gonna be the target that I want to hit first we'll hit here right around this 271 area and kind of bounce between 271 and 276 and if we can get to 281 it'll pause and then we can go ahead and probably bring it up to the next breakout of 292 to up here around th a little under three dollars but this is like I said Every time it pulls back, it bounces right back up to that yearly high. Pulled back to the pivot point right there, 282. And I say pivot point because we have this other um, supports down here that to drop down to. And then bounce all the way back up to that 405 again, to that four buck area. And then we've had this hard sell off during unfiltered conditions in the last three months that were really unnecessary in the 2018 and now we're bouncing back up so let's see if we can get up to 281 if we can get to 281 we're going to start hitting the three different resistance lines that I have here 287 291 and 298 and then we've got a lot more to go we have got a lot more to go on this stock so this is CPRX keep it on watch you see the 50-day cross down here and we had that big sell-off we're starting to turn around here this thing's starting to turn around a little bit and we've already had the big bounce on this stock a little bit from that 185 to 264 to what was it two had a high of around 268 so keep CPRX on watch and I will personally it's going to be on the top of my watch this come Monday morning and this next one Vegas FTK that you mentioned to me yes yeah, so FTK I mentioned because you know you're volume so um ftk uh is flow tech industries and amazing volume i mean over 22 million shares on friday um you know they're into the chemistry and services of oil and gas across the u.s and internationally they actually have two segments they've got an energy chemistry technology and then they got a consumer and industrial chemistry technology so um you know they're very involved in the design and manufacture and packaging um of the um, nanofluid brand name for use in oil and gas well drilling and cementing so very interesting company but the reason it soared um because we do see here on the chart i mean it had um if you know the beautiful idea if it would have been swinged the day before i mean what a run it had um and the reason for the move was because flow tech industries uh, has a deal to sell their Florida chemical to Archer Daniels Midland for $175 million cash. Um, so this actual is actually good for the company FTK um, because the sale expects to have a negligible cash tax effect, uh, which will actually offset the company's outstanding operating losses. And uh, the CEO, John Chisholm, he actually stated that, you know, he believes the benefits of this transaction are compelling on multiple fronts and actually in the best interest of stakeholders and the fact that they're excited about having a relationship with Archer Daniels Midland um, to actually look at maybe additional opportunities to leverage their portfolio of products, maybe help better serve the oil and gas market so it looks like they could have let's say some more strategic uh benefits for both companies involved 
And, um, you know, Archer Daniels, um, that company who they sold to, um, you know, is not a small uh, company. So, uh, you know, they're an interesting company as well. And uh, I think there could be some potential uh, benefits to the two synergies. Um, you know, ADM, which is uh, the the name of the company, Archer Daniels, um, they do all kinds of things. And they're actually listed also on the stock market. And um, they have a lot of things going on. So they have actually 31,000 employees. They're in 170 countries. So there's going to be, I think, some good synergies here with the, with the two. Um, and ADM is involved in many things. They're into fuel, which is why there's a connection with FTK. They're into farmer services, they're in financial services, they're into animal nutrition, they're into supplements, they're into food. I mean, I think this is going to maybe help open up some more doors for FTK. Um, so FTK had a nice little move if you had had the stock the day before. Um, nice move on Friday. Uh, however, um, I still think that there's uh, a nice little chart here. So oh I'm going to let Jim talk about that. I mean, I like that it's over the 50, I, you know, res little resistance here at the 200 day. But uh, Jim, I still think it looks decent. Um, but I'll let you talk about what you see on this chart. So when I see a big bounce like this from 146 all the way up to 270, 289, you know, I have some concerns that maybe it'll pull back and consolidate just a little bit. I also notice that the Houston-based chemical company has new C CFO and there are a few other executives stepping down. So I think that's always sometimes a good thing for a company. They, they kind of rebrand themselves a little bit. So I'm looking now at the uh, yearly chart and here we were hovering down at a, just a year low. I mean, look at this, 677. Had a solid resistance and then it just completely sold down most of the year like almost every other stock did last year we had you know, 2018 was a year for market correction and we got it 2019 is going to be for a market rebound but we had a low here of 95 cents and it bounced up within five days to 146 and then what vegas was talking about and then friday it bounced all the way up and we had a big Big, 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 big bounce. Huge. It ran all the way up to the 200 SMA from the 50 in a matter of overnight. So I've got a couple little support lines on this thing. I'm going to bring it down to the one day. First, I'll bring it to the 20 just to show you about the big gap that it made and how it ran up and pulled back and then bounced up to midway to resistance level of 280 and then consolidated here at 274 which I thought was a pretty good support on that day. So I don't want it to go any lower than that 227. I hate to see that if it does, or if, if you know, if I see this 50 day start to cross down on a daily one minute, I'm gonna go ahead and I'd say sell it and wait for the support level, which I'm seeing at 235 at a, at a, at a, year, at a low. I don't want it to go below that 235. And I do see a solid support right in this area, 250, to 255 and, and I've noticed here I made a couple comments about it during pre-market hours when I started noticing this movement here and then we had that breakout up here to resistance level of just under three bucks right around 299 is what I would say to 297 and we had the 50 SMA cross down on the daily one minute and also, you know, it was just showing strength because it kept hovering around those moving averages. And then we had a little squeeze here where it started breaking out and it bounced on up. So it consolidated here for a good hour at the 273 level. I've just has got, I'm going to have it on watch for Monday. I expect a little pullback for it. I don't want to see it go no lower than 255. If it goes below that, I'm going to go ahead and say sell and wait for another pullback to around 235. And then jump back in it. So this is FTK. Yeah, it's an energy sector, right, Vegas? Energy? Yes. Yep, being in the now. and In the now. In the now. So the next one I want to talk about is a stock that I got in that Vegas and I ran up. And we were very proud of this call. We, oh, called, yeah. this, we called this thing out. It's called Pura. 
P U R A. Yeah. Vegas, I just want to mention. Yeah, I just want to mention about Pura that uh, they did have news Friday that uh, they did introduce a new uh, CBD sports water bullet bottle, and they actually reached a million dollar in sales milestone. Uh, so they did introduce this new sports water bullet bottle to ring in the new year. And, uh, this, they have refreshed their logo. They have, um, the logos refreshed. They got the patented cannabis extraction partner from Cali, which oh is K-A-L-Y. Yes. And they've improved with, um, another partner called ALKM and their new state of the art bottling production line. So they actually have a new look for the bottle and uh, I think we'll definitely hear more information on this uh, which they did mention that next week to celebrate the one million dollar milestone in sales and to introduce the all new uh, cannabis water sports water and um, very interesting so uh, we'll see I mean this company launched you know this launched back in 2017 their sales have grown they said 600 percent in the first year and they got these flavors like kiwi, strawberry, lemon, mm -hmm. lime. So this is really interesting. So, you know, Jim noticed the chart and uh, decided that he was going to look to swing trade. And, you know, people might think, uh, especially if, you know, if you're in the chat room and, you know, Jim said, you know, he was looking to swing trade the stock from 08 to, you know, 010, you know, from 8 cents to 10 cents. And people might be thinking, two cents that's so crazy like who would swing trade something for two cents well let jim tell you his methodology here and how much money he can make on even two cents so i'm going to turn it over to you jim because people were like who swings trades for two cents yep. well jim's got to tell you something so pay attention especially to newbies this is really good information i think people with small accounts that could invest less than a thousand dollars in a trade and you see something down below 10 cents I usually when I, I look at you got to know how much profit you want to take out of a stock and so with 10 with an eight cent ticker and I'm showing the bottles right here this is new sport bottles they got out and I really believe in in this movement right now especially ever since Canada legalized marijuana and that all these big companies are getting involved now and she did mention Pura, along with Cali and ALKM, and also don't leave out InBev, because they're in the same kind of industry, InBev. So those are four you'd want to keep in this one sector alone. And I'm going to pull up the, the, the yearly chart on this thing, and Vegas and I called this thing out at $0.05, cents, and it ran all the way up to $0.25 cents here. So, you know, if anybody would have listened to me that day and bought 10,000 shares at five cents and run it up to 20 cents, 25 cents, and I was yelling people that analysts were calling 25 and so did I. I backed them up, but I said once it hit that 25, it's going to pull back. And they were right on target with it, and it pulled right back. And then we were able to flip this in and out, in and out, in and out for a couple of times, and then... So 20 cents times 10,000 shares, do the math, and uh, you'll realize that a small $500 investment would have really done you very well. And so we were talking about Cali. Someone introduced me to Cali Friday, and I said, well, I'm going to go look at Pura because it's like they're, they're, they're brothers and sisters. They're working together. And now that the ALKM is involved, I'll be putting it on my watch list also. So when I got in at 8-1. And I'm not pumping this stock or nothing. It's just one that I like to play. And I let everybody know when I get in a trade and when I get out of a trade and how far I want to take it. Well, I'm pulling up the 20-day chart. It hit my support here at 8.1, which I had illustrated. And right now I'm up $30 just on 10,000 shares, up just 0 .0. I'm up 40 actually. Well, I'm up 30 because I got in at 8.1, and now it's at 8.4. But I want to see this go up to at least nine, that, where I might exit, and I can get me ninety dollars out of it. Or if I get lucky and it runs all by, back up to ten cents, I'll get two hundred dollars out of it. So this a small trade for a small account, 
or and people will probably buy more you know some people will buy 50,000 shares and if I'd have bought 50,000 I was just doing this for to show that people with small accounts can make money I usually would probably bought 50,000 shares and if I'd have done that I would be up oh three times I'd be up 150 bucks on it already but you got to look at the block trades you got to look at the time in sales you got to see if that trade's going to accept them them offers you know and I buy all or one all in all I buy if they don't take all of them then I'm not in the trade because I don't like to buy you know put an order in say hopefully it'll fill I want it to fill and if it don't fill I'm not in the trade so I bought 10,000 shares at 8 1 I want to run it up to 9 first thing in the morning and maybe I'll get right out of it at 9 it depends on how I feel when I wake up but the news I love the news on this company I think this is another catalyst to bring it back up to that 9 to that 10 cent area and that's Pura so keep in mind Pura Cali K-A-L-Y and A-K-L-M and throw in InBev in there too because we, we watched InBev Friday and it had a nice little run we called InBev under 5 and Vegas what else okay um, well, I think you wanted to mention the uh, UGAS and DGAS. And, yep. you know, those are just, you know, people are like, what's U and what's <laughs> D? So U's up, D's down. But um, UGAS, DGAS, I mean, those are, you know, for those of you that are new for trading too, I mean, you might think, what the hell are those? So basically, they're just um, ETFs for the natural gas sector. And, you know, UGAS, uh, when it gets cold, that that goes up and then when degas um when it gets hot you know then people trade that stock so it just depends on what's happening out there with the weather right jim depends on how much and, energy uh, they use it's a natural right. gas play etf yeah so uh jim well i i think you should mention like how you alerted degas uh not to, or was it you gas the other day at like 36, 20 something dollars 36 how much was it 36 okay and look where it's at now yeah and and this is what I mean. They it's they play just the opposite of each other, and I, I and th these have out these have run a lot different than they have in the past because I, I watch them every year. I watch them every year around winter time and especially in January, and they've just been. I mean, some idiot comes out with a weather report back in September and it says it's going to be the coldest winter ever, and which we haven't had yet. Don't ever believe in in these weathermen. Just go with your own insight. And so I was saying this is way overdone. You guys, for example, and it still blows my mind how far this thing run. And I'm just going to post a 20 day chart on, or a three month. Well, let me see. I won't post a year's chart on this. This thing at one time, it's had splits. Oh, that's Pura. That ain't going to be the one I want to look at. <laughs> This thing had an average at around 50 bucks, low support at $50, okay? And this sucker ran all the way up on that false weather report, all the way up to 260 and just went crazy. And it was, I just, I got so scared of it, I didn't want to look at it anymore. And I told the room, I said, it's going to go back down here to this $86 level, 87. And it did. Look, in five days, it dropped from 147 all the way down to 70 cents, 71 dollars, and it's just nuts. And being in the now, knowing about what real weather is going to be like, and and how things pull back. So we pulled back way below the support level in two days. I mean, it was at 63 cents, and it ran all the way down 30 bucks in a matter of three days. And that was just oversold, oversold territory. And I was telling the room, I said, January's coming up. This might be time to get in this stock and run it back up to that $50 level. So then with Missouri got this big snowstorm, 14 inches of snow, which we haven't seen in a long time. And it, right in Missouri, I live in Springfield. And there, I mean, there, we didn't get but an eighth of an inch. But St. Louis and, and Kansas City got a ton of snow. We just, it just barely missed us. But yet, people are going to use a lot more natural gas, and you guys will run on that. And so right now, I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart, 
just to show you. I didn't want to talk much about this stock. I just wanted to mention that I called this thing out at $36. said get ready for January and the thing ran up to 47 here. It ran on up $7 Friday. We hit that 200. So I'm thinking this thing's going to definitely go back up to 57 to 60 bucks, but I want to see I want to see it break past this 53 area. That's that's where I'm going to call a solid support right around 52 53. But it can pull back. I mean, I can't I can't I can't my crystal ball can't read into the future much on this one because it's so volatile and it's a risky play so you just got to know when you feel get get that feeling and I had that feeling when it hit 36 and we're at 47 now so you know it's a 10 10 11 dollar bounce me I would be out of it and I'd just wait for the pullbacks and that's you gas <coughs> It needs to consolidate, maybe pull back to around 43 bucks, 44, and then it'll bounce on up and hopefully hit that area right around 48 to the $52 channel. And that's where it needs to be, to be at an average. And same with DGAS. I called DGAS wrong. DGAS was probably one of the worst trades I made all year, and I don't make too many of them, but I do make them. And when I seen this stock go down, I'm going to pull up the year's chart. Because I'm really conservative when it comes to me getting into a stock. I just don't buy at the high. I wait for the pullbacks. This thing dropped from, it had a split. So it's already had a split and it's reverse split. This thing was down at 5 bucks, $6 from 14 and I was telling the room it's time to buy this thing, and it dipped on down to around three dollars, and I just shocked me. And then it had a split to bring it back up to that fifty-dollar level, and then it ran all the way up to right around one thirty, one twenty-seven, forty-six dollars to one twenty-seven, and it just, it just, then it hit that fifty SMA and couldn't break past it. So right now we're at ninety-seven. I think this is going to pull back a little bit. I'm going to look at the 20 day now. I've got a support level at 92. I think we can pull back to this area right around 80. And that's where I'm going to say right around 80 bucks. But these things are volatile, real volatile. And experienced traders should be the only ones that play these right now. But if you'd have took my call down there at 36, that would have been an easy scalp or an easy flip. And that's you gas and D gas. I don't play them much anymore because I just can't predict the way these things will run. But if I do see an oversold area, I'm in on it. Vegas, you got anything okay. you want to close with? Uh, are, were you going to talk about some pot stocks or no? Oh, yeah. I was going to talk about Cron. Okay, I mean, so we talk about, let's talk about Cron and then uh, so I'm going to comment after that on Tilray. Oh, and Tilray too, yeah. Yeah, so let's definitely um, talk about Cron. Everyone knows Kronos Group. How can you not? And especially if you're in, if you follow the pot sector, I will say there are people, by the way, that do not trade pot stocks just out of personal reasons. So I know actually a lot of traders that have um, messaged me and said, um, "I know I like your comments that you guys talk about pot stocks, but personally, I don't trade pot stocks." And I said, and that's okay. You don't have to trade anything, actually. So you trade what you're comfortable trading, you yep. know? So, um, but I know some people are not, uh, don't believe in marijuana in general. Um, so that's actually why they're not trading it. And that's okay. Everyone's entitled to do, you know, free country, do what you want. And um, whatever works for you. So, yeah, you know, just wanted to comment that a lot of traders love the action, but they're not trading it. So and that's I thought that was actually interesting because I never actually thought of it that way. Um, so I thought that was interesting to get uh, some feedback from some people that are active traders that told me that. So yeah, that's interesting. And I'm you know I won't trade casino stocks either. So you know right. that's that's and yeah. and I do I do believe personally I do believe that this is not a Bitcoin crave. This is actually for real. I believe that it will cure a lot of, and it will help a lot of people that are sick. I do believe it will help our veterans that, that suffer chronic, uh, what do you call that? 
disorder. PTSD. Over exactly. And I do believe that it'll help the elderly. I do believe it'll help Alzheimer's. I do believe that it'll help epileptics that suffer from taking chemical drugs. And I do believe that the pharmaceuticals are at war with this era that we're going through right now. I also believe that the federal government is starting to put their thumbs up on it. And so, I, but I, I also believe there's a lot of idiots out there that'll take advantage of it. I do believe that it's a good way to fight the drug war that's going on. And I do believe that it's a way to bring income into the government for tax money. So there's a lot of good positive things about it. I think a person needs to have an open mind. And I made a tweet just the other day, Friday on uh, Stock Twits, uh, CNBC started badgering, badgering the, the, this industry. And I just said, please, CNBC, just keep your sh mouth shut about this industry. Because you don't know, you don't have a clue of the benefits that, that it can heal and help people. But yes, there are idiots also out there that will take advantage of it. And Cron, I called down here at ten dollars and fifteen cents when we had the market crash back in February, back in De uh, December. You see this big sell-off we had consistently, December sell-off. And I, when it got down to, when I mean, it got down all the way to nine fifty-five with a support level of nine seventy-four. And I mentioned it then too, but also mentioned seeing the consolidated period at ten fifteen. And if you'd have took that trade with me there, you'd been up four four dollars. So this has been running a good trend line up here for the last two weeks. Um, always expect a little pullback, but this company's getting involved in that at Marlboro company. They're going to turn Marlboro Man into Marijuana Man. And I read a little article about that Friday that I thought was kind of interesting. But there's just so much, so, so many people getting involved in it. Pension plans are getting involved in it. California pension plan bought into Tillery. And I don't know if that was a good idea, especially when it was up there around $140. So, you know, you can see where it is now. And I think Tillery is going to have a few issues. It's probably going to pull back a little bit. So I just want to bring that. I want to open that up to everybody. At Tillery, I called. Another perfect call. Vegas was a witness to that. I oh, said yeah. I said it was going to Big go time. to 100 when it was down here at, at right around 70 bucks. I think it was even around 60 something. And I said, Hillary? I said, Hillary. I meant Tillery, <laughs> Vegas. But you, but you call her Hillary. Yeah, I call her Hillary. But uh, I said, it's going to go to 100 in five, four or five days. And she took me up on it. She believed me. And bam, we hit that $100 mark. And I was so tickled. And I played this when it was at, at 100. I used to be my support level. So that's just, I just had a little flashback that maybe it'd go right back to that old support and pull back. And it did. It pulled back to 95 bucks. And that's T-L-R-Y. Did you want to say anything about that stock, Miss Vegas? Well, I did want to mention just about uh, two things. So just to go back on Cron. So, you know, Cron has a partnership with Ginkgo, which is G-I-N-K-O. And Ginkgo Bioworks is the actual company. It's a biotech company, by the way, in Boston, founded by a phenomenal smart guy. He's a scientist. His name's Tom Knight. He is from the MIT University. I mean, he, his company specializes in using genetic engineering to produce bacteria with industrial applications. Now, the synergy here is interesting, okay? Because Kronos, Kron, and Ginkgo um, have a you know he heavy deal in the works. Mm. So it looks like in their recent presentation that they did back in September, you know, Ginkgo Bioworks could enable Kronos to produce the cannabinoid ingredient that's essential for product development, which at a fraction of the cost at commercial scale and at a higher purity than what's currently available. So um, they obviously need to do you know, further confirmation that supply needs are where the money is. Um, but you know what? That is really interesting uh, partnership. So I think um, you know, this could be some more news and more synergies between the pharmaceutical sector 
and obviously the uh, marijuana sector. So exactly what you were talking about, Jen. Yep. And I'm willing to stick my arm out on the limb here and say that this thing probably go to 20 bucks easily. I'm not saying it's going to do it now, but I am looking into the future, and I do believe we're going to see a $20 on this stock. Uh, yeah. The momentum's there. The, the, this news gets constantly gets great news, constantly, constantly. And so, yeah, and then there's another one that we like. I want you to add to that pot sector. And that was, you know, that's including Pura, Cali, and the small little beverage companies. But these are more into the medical part and into the supply part. And that would be CGC. CGC. Yeah, I just want to mention. I just want to mention too. I, was, yeah. I, I want to just finish my comment on Tilray. Yeah. Because I was just finishing on Cron. Oh but, yes. You know, on Tilray, um, you know, the it did the the stock surged as well. But you know, part of the reason it surged is that Privateer Holdings, okay, who actually owns seventy five million shares of Tilray, um was you know those shares were in a lockup okay so they weren't allowed to sell them until next week when the lockup expires and they actually uh one of the managing partners of the company michael blue released a statement saying that you know market is speculating you know their holdings of tilray and uh they actually said that um we do not have plans to register sell or distribute the 75 million shares that we own even when the lockup expires next week. So as a result of that statement, that put some confidence in the investors. And then the stock had a, a little bit of a run that day as well when that statement and press release came out. So that was interesting. Did, did you know that to know why. it sounds here like InBev and Tilray announced research partnership focused on non-alcohol THC and CBD, uh, CBD beverages too. Yes. And that's InBev. So InBev and Tillery are getting involved together. So, and one thing I've learned about industries, it's kind of like the auto industry. You're going to have a bunch of them come out, but they're going to thin out. And some of them are going to partner up and become stronger and stronger. And we've had InBev on our watch list for six months, and we're still bullish on it. We've been bullish on Tillery from $24 to 300 and something. We're bullish on uh, Cron. We're bullish on CB, uh, CB, uh, CBG, CG, CGC. So, yeah, I'm, I'm real hot on this sector, and I just wanted to mention these at the end of the broadcast here. And Vegas, you got anything else you want to mention? It's Stock-wise? Yep. No. I think we're good. I think we have a, quite the big list. Oh, yes, we do. Uh we for really, the week. Yep. And uh, well, actually, even just for tomorrow. I mean, because we're gonna, you know, look to hope market update tomorrow. Uh, you know, and uh, we'll see uh, what happens tomorrow in the market. I'm gonna pull up this InBev chart. Vegas and I called this thing down here at four dollars and seventy cents in the room, and look at it. In the last three days, we've had a pretty good little channel here. We went a little bit below that channel. At six twenty-seven, but then look—that's a—that's a almost a two dollar, three dollar, two dollar bounce right there, in a matter of less than three weeks. And I do like InBev. This is one you can play the pullbacks on. And if you see a high of the day and it starts to consolidate, wait for the pullback to the next maybe support level, and play it. It does it every day, every time. You can see the pattern. So let's see if we could break past this 640 on, on there and get back into these new highs that we had here at the beginning of this 20-day period. And again, that big sell-off was just a great indicator that it was oversold right there at the end of the last few days of December when we had that big crash. And I'm just telling everybody, check stocks that you love, that you've played, that you admire, because they're going to bounce back up. And they did. Almost every one of them that I've mentioned or even looked at, you just look at the charts and go from December and see what happened to any stocks that you crave, that you've played. And you still have room to be playing the volatility as they start to consolidate at the old resistance or maybe at, at a support level. And take that advice because I, really I really do mean that. And this is the aftermarket report. Um, be sure to subscribe. 
and ring that bell so you can get our market updates and today's date this Jim in Vegas and Jim today's dates January the 13th 2019 and we love stocks Vegas you love stocks don't you I sure do all right have a good day have a good day everyone